Hey guys, it's Katie. Um, today we're going to make another translucent cane. I'm trying, I'm doing a project and I have a project in mind, so I'm kind of making all the parts for it. Yesterday um, we did this little, what I'm calling a buttercup flower, even though it's got some white in it and stuff, um, a little translucent flower, which I think will look super cute on the project that I'm thinking. That's just the end of the cane. I don't know why it doesn't want to focus on this little guy. Like that. So that was the one we did the other day. Look for that tutorial. Um, or I can post a link to it. Today what we're going to do is... What do we want to do? I think we're going to do just a simple like petal cane. A white petal cane. A uh, five petal flower. Just as a little flower to accent. So first thing you're going to need is a, a log of white and I'm using Primo today. Usually use Primo or Kato. Um, I do have some female but I haven't really started using it. So anyways, we have a log of white rolled out and smooshed down. So you can use however much you want. Um, I'm going to make just a small amount of this because I want it, you know, I want them probably smaller than this, so that will make a lot. The next thing we're going to need is some translucent. You can use regular translucent if that's what you have. I generally only buy, you know, in my one pound blocks, um, white translucent. And for some reason, it's usually on Etsy, and I couldn't find it today because I needed more. Um, so I had to order on uh, Polymer Clay Superstore. So I don't know. I, it's usually on Etsy, but I, I seriously couldn't find it. So... What we're going to do next is we're going to roll out some of this um, translucent and wrap it around our log. And I think I'll probably wrap, roll this out of my pasta machine on size zero. So let me do that. And this is a very basic but effective little cane. And you can make it bigger. You don't need to reduce it down to a small little size. Um, so first thing we'll do is we'll wrap this guy. So lay him on. You know, and when I tend to trim this, what I find is a lot of times I was going like, I'd line it up, but I'd come in tapered and one end would be skinnier. So really try to watch your end and make sure you're going straight. Or if not anything, a little wide, because you can always trim off excess. So we'll set that aside because we're still going to need that. Try to set that aside. I was up to like midnight making these because it was so hot yesterday that it was just so sticky. I had to let it sit for a couple hours and I was going to come back to it the next morning but then I decided to finish it, got on a roll and didn't go to bed till midnight. So, Or later actually, I think it was later. So I'm just wrapping it around making sure it's covering each end and then when we get to the end if you kind of give it a little press or press it like this and unwrap it see this line right here that's where you need to trim and that will give you a close cut I don't overly worry about that so set it in the best it can you don't want it to overlap so if when you set it down it's sticking up a little bit take just take your blade and trim off any access to make it flush okay you can always trim and then if anything here is sticking up a little bit, I want to trim that off as well because I don't want to waste any of my translucent. I'm going to be doing a lot of translucent canes coming up because I don't think there's enough tutorials on the internet for translucent canes and I really, really like to use them in my projects. And again, I'll be posting the project we make with all of these soon. But we got to get the parts made and if I put them all in the same video, it is way too long. Okay, so then just just a quick roll, nothing major. Okay, so we're gonna then need to make a couple of little triangles, and this we'll use in just a minute. But I'll show you how to do that before I continue on. So take your translucent and make it into a little log, and we're gonna be using my I'm gonna use my extruder. You could also roll out a long skinny log and make it a triangle with your fingers. Um, but I'm going to use my extruder so I have a, a uniform 
triangle. So I took my triangle one. This is this extruder I got off of Amazon. Again, I think it was like an $8 one, one of the cheap ones, but it actually works really well. It's not too hard to um, rotate if you're, you know, using, if your clay is pretty good. Um, I keep all of my little pieces in this old pill bottle. So if you ever see my pill bottle, that's usually that and my micro circle cutters I keep in a pill bottle as well. Okay, so I don't know how much we'll need. We'll try that. So you just set it down in. You unscrew it a little bit more. You put your little, I usually set it on the top here for some reason. I don't know. I find I always do that. And then screw it on. And so we'll extrude a nice long strip of this. And we're going to need essentially two of these. One for either side of the circle. Because we're going to turn this, this here into a petal shape. And I'm going to show you an easy way of doing that. And I haven't conditioned this translucent a lot. Um, now if your Primo's breaking and stuff after bake, if you properly bake, I have not had Primo really break on me for pendants and stuff. Um, but if you're having any kind of issues of Primo or really good clay breaking, I mean Sculpey 3 is one thing, that's going to break. Um, sorry, it's going to. But like if your Primo's breaking, either your baking is not correct, your temperature is not correct, or it's not conditioned well enough. This is fairly fresh clay, so. Okay, so I'll cut that off. Okay, so now we have this really long triangle. Do I have my, hang on one sec, let me see if I still have. Yeah, so these triangles come out. This was a box top I'm making, or I made with um, Swelligant metal paint. But anyways, the, the triangles come out to about that size. I don't know. This is just a bunch of triangles. So we'll have that ready. And so the next part is I'm going to reduce this circle down just a little bit. Not a lot, but a little bit. Um, just that, so that this triangle... I really can't explain it. I'm going to reduce it down a little bit. You'll see in a second why. So I'm going to start in the middle, work my way to the end. And you could have made your circle a little less long, or a little less um, condensed. Okay. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to, if it's laying flat, and this is, let me see if I can... Okay, if it's laying flat, we want to stick the triangle in. This is really hard to show you guys. I want to show you. I'm going to hold it up while I do it. We want to stick the triangle in to fill in that space. So, hang on, let me get a good piece here. And it's hard to show you because it's not. I'm going to pinch it a little bit just to make it a little more pointy. But I already have a fairly good triangle shape from my extruder. Let me cut just a section of this off. <clears throat> and I want to stick it down in here. So we get a little more bulk at one end of it. Hmm. No, the extruder. I thought the extruder thing would work, but it doesn't work. Okay, let me just see. We're doing this together. We'll just make one. Let me get this all balled up. So I gotta, you know, sometimes these videos I haven't really, you know, I have something in mind, a lot of them, but I haven't really done it. I don't need to make 10 canes. So to practice it once and then show you, for me, waste a lot of clay because these canes will be I'll use them for a few projects but I'm not going to use them for a hundred projects I don't tend to make 
that much of one project. So a lot of times if I have something in mind, I'm going to make it and show it to you while I make it. And so I may have to work out some kinks. A lot of times I've never made it. I just have something in my head um, or I've gotten inspiration from something I've seen, but I haven't worked out the kinks. So the main idea is to get the base a little wider and flat. So let me show you my picture here, if this will make more sense. Kind of like this. That was a quick picture. But you want to fill in, if it's flat against the table, you want to fill in these ends here so it can get a little wider there, if that makes sense, if this is our log. So that's what I'm attempting to do now. And so I rolled out a log here. Let me just cut some of this off. My dog's dreaming again, like this. And so I'm going to make, kind of turn it into a triangle. Mainly I'm going to flatten out this one end that's going to go under. And let's see what that does. Let me get a little tile suit. I can show you this. So kind of like that. Okay. I thought the extruder would have worked better, but it didn't, so don't use your extruder. Or you can, and just figure it out yourself. This is kind of the idea we're going for. So I'm going to flatten one end, kind of make like a, almost like a comma shape or something. I mean, I know a lot of people who have patron accounts and people are helping them pay for supplies can make a bunch, but I don't have a patron account. I'm not sure if people would help me out with a patron account to see tutorials. Um, I mainly just wanted to give people ideas. Okay, that's kind of what we're looking for here. Let me just cut the ends off. Make sure it's kind of even. Okay. Now we need to shape this into a little petal. And this is going to be our top and this is going to be our bottom. Okay. So with polymer clay, you can really manipulate it. So first get these guys a little flush. Just by pushing and pulling and smoothing them off. Okay. And what I also could have done now that I think about it is just taken a couple of layers of this and just of the sheet, you know. You could take a couple layers and just wrap it and wrap it and get it to make a dome, I guess. I kind of go on about this a, a complicated way. I'm basing it off of something I saw, and it's almost more of a complicated way, I think. Not a tutorial, I just saw like a picture. And I was like, oh, I want to make that. And we're going to pinch this guy down a little bit. I'm give it a little roll. We just want one area fatter than the other area. Like this. And now we're going to reduce this as a triangle with this being the bottom and this being our point. So the way you do that is just take your fingers and push. Push it down on your tile. It doesn't need to be like a critical triangle. We just need to get enough to get a five, five petals out of. I'm just laying it on my tile and I'm pinching and pulling. See how it's a triangle here with a little more translucent up here? That's what we want. And you guys are going to see this with me. Every time I cut these, it's like, oh, look what I did. But I've never, a lot of these I haven't really brought it to fruition. You know, it's in your head or something you've seen on someone else's project and you're like, oh, how do I do that? And then you, you sit there and kind of think about it and then you end up doing it. And this is the doing it part that I'm showing you. A lot of times I've never done it. I've never practiced it. 
I have a pendant in mine that I want to do. That I kind of saw something similar on Google when I was just re um, looking up where I could buy white translucent clay and a, a photo popped up of a polymer clay pendant and I was like, I really like that, so I want to do something similar. Okay, so I'm going to continue reducing this. You don't need to watch me do the same thing over and over, but that's that's what we're going to do. Okay, so now I have five, and I'm going to cut them with cutting my excess off. So I'll cut my excess off here. This is kind of what we have. And the camera's right where my head should be, so it's kind of hard to cut, but we're going to cut five of these. And again, this is not a main focal focal cane. This is the excess cane, or um, an accent cane. Sorry. So this is what we have, right? And we're gonna put these together. We're gonna make petals out of these one, and we're gonna put these together as like a five part. God, stand up as like a five um, petal flower kind of like this kind of like that so the next thing I'm going to do and they're already wrapped so we could have just you know wrapped them at the end like we've done other flowers with a color um, but they're already now wrapped in their translucent so the next thing we need to do is get a little white for our center there so I don't have any extra white out. So let me grab a little log of white and we'll use that for our center. Okay, so I have some white out. Um, what we're gonna do before we use our log of white is change these into petal shapes. And I guess the whole point of already filling them was it gave us um, less back filling to do on this one. So just same way we did this flower one the other day, or like any flower you want to kind of, it's already in a triangle, so that's good. So really we just need to blunt up these ends. Any way you, in any shape you want, just get it like a little flower shape. And see, by manipulating the ends, it just rotate, rounds our, because what you're going to see is the white, not the translucent, you know, is the goal. So by manipulating the translucent, it kind of manipulates the white. There's one, let's just round that guy out a little bit even though it's already pretty rounded in there. So don't look at your translucent as much, look more at your white because that's what you're gonna see. That one's got a little hole in it, but once we reduce it, it'll be fine. And then we got to pick which ones are going to be our top and then what ones are going to be our side ones. Just by looking and seeing what looks like a flower to you. This is a very basic white flower. There's still a little excess here, but when I reduce, I'll cut that off anyway, so I don't want to... Okay, so now we need to set it up. See, look, that's like our thickest one, so I think, right, is that our fattest one or is this one fatter? Maybe that will be our top there. And then these two are smaller, so maybe these two will be our sides. Like that. And I cut them a little crooked so it's not standing up quite right. And maybe these two will be our bottoms. Like that. So we'll do something like that. And then we'll just fill with a little translucent down in between. Okay, so now we have a little log of white, and we need to make this a center, just like we did other, the other day on that um, red Flip It flower. That's what I called it, the Flip It flower. It's a Skinner blend. And then you flipped it. Let me cut this down a little bit so you can see. And like I said, I'm winging this, guys. I don't really quite know what I'm doing. I'm just doing it. So if this was my top... flower or petal okay like that 
try to keep it right on the tippy point. And then this was a side one, so let me set that one kind of there. I'm not sticking them really hard to this. This guy's a little crooked, but... So now we need to fill with translucent. And pretty much however you want to fill this, just fill it. So I'm going to take this rest of this translucent. And it almost looks like we just need to make little... Well, this is a bigger one because it's a five petal down here. So I am going to do what I don't normally do because these are long and skinny. I'm going to kind of make it... A tr make a triangle out of it. So if you look, all we got to do is slide something in there. So I'll get it about my thickness that I need. Let's try to figure this out. I'm pinching an end. Or you could lay it on your tile and just pinch one end to fit down in there. But it's not super, it's not a complete point either. So what if we do this? and then cut it off so it's kind of flat. Let's see what this looks like. It used to be a little longer. So I'm gonna play around with this to get a piece to fit in there. This is the part I hate. I hate filling. Um, to get some parts to fit down in there and then I'll be back when that's done. Um, pretty much just make triangles to fit in here the way I hate to do this, but I did that to myself, so I gotta get it in there somehow. So, um, I won't make you sit here and watch me struggle with this part, because for some reason, this part I struggle with. I do not know why, but I do. Um, maybe because I hate doing it. I'm gonna set this off to the side. And that's why I struggle with it, I think, because I hate making these little triangles fit but I do want to see how big of ones I need so I'm going to set my flower back up and that way I can visualize what I need to fit in there and then I can squish it in there together okay so just make it work figure it out make it work I'll let you just do it on your own and um I'll be back. Okay, now that I'm starting to figure this out, even though I really don't like doing it, I'm going to show you kind of what I'm doing here. Okay, so I have a little log, so I want to get something way down in there to fit. So first thing I'm going to do is just take this little log and set it down in right here. That way I know I have something all the way down in there. Okay, and that would sit on top of that there okay and then I made something like this and that's what you're trying to make a bunch of these to fit the size that you have um, or the space that you have to fill and I'm going to set this guy in here against that little log and if it doesn't come all the way up to the edge that's okay because like with this one I just added a few of the little circles like I've showed you on other uh, flower canes let me cut this off so I don't have a bunch sticking out. I can cut it a little bit more evenly after. <clears throat> and then we're going to set this guy making, trying to make sure your point is hitting your petal or your center piece. Okay, like that. So if that's our top, those are our two side ones there. And all these little spaces will get filled in. But now I have a couple little gaps here, so I would do that the regular way I usually show you how to make, um, how to fill by making little sausages. And then I'm going to pinch a triangle to get that to fit in there. And this is a bunch of what you're going to be doing. Uh, hang on, that doesn't look good. To fill this. I mean, if you got a better way, do it your way. Um, you just have to backfill. 
I just don't like backfilling, but it's part of making a flower cane. You gotta backfill. And I'll set that little triangle down in there and break it off like that. And so I'll do one more. Pinch it with my fingers like this to make a triangle. I'm going to set the point down in there. It's starting to get sticky. Today is the three H's in our state, they called it on the Weather Channel. Hot, humid, and hazy. Like it's so humid, you can see the air, like it's like everything's a haze. We get, well, when it gets hot in Vermont, it gets humid. Like the air is so thick. So that will be fairly good. I might just add a little piece of um, rolled out white later on these guys to make them go all the way up and then we'll wrap it. So I'm going to continue doing that with my last two pieces here like that and I'll fill those in and then I'll be back when I'm done. But I just wanted to show you once I got one made off camera what I was doing because it takes a minute to make that little thing fit in. Okay, so I have most of them in here and set up. And what I was just thinking before I continue on, you know, these areas here, the this was the scraps that I cut off when I cut into five pieces. You can try not to get any white and cut off your excess translucent um, just to keep that if you separate it now before you mix it together. Not that you're going to mix it together, but... You know, try to, you know, keep any of your translucent that you can. Why not, right? So cut these little excess pieces off because this wasn't mixed up like crazy. I just wanted to point that out that you can always try on your ends in this type of case, especially since we're going to be making a few of these coming up. Um, to cut off any of your excess uh, translucent. So that's got, but these make really cool, if you get this swirled or marbled together, they make really cool cabochons too, or even just backs because they'll add a lot of, you know, anything with translucent seems to add a lot of 3D depth. So I just wanted to show you, this is what I would do just to try to save. I mean, you don't need to. I mean, if you got all kinds of money, great, but I got, $1,200 a month in student loans, so I can't really afford to waste any if I can help it, which is why I only make small canes. And once that's reduced, that, that cane that we have going, it's going to be a lot of cane. So swirl the white from your excess together and that will make a cool backing. Okay, so next thing we need to do is just put a thin sheet around the whole thing to make it solid. And on some of these, I added little sausages in here to just fill in any gaps, but I think that will be fine. So let me get a piece of translucent rolled out, enough to fit around our cane, and then we'll begin reducing. Okay, this should be long enough. So we'll just lay it out flat, take our piece, and we'll kind of cut it to size. Working on this matte tile, everything kind of sticks to it a little bit more, but you get less glare if I put it on that than, no, I'm not even using my blade. Cut one end flat. I tend to just pick it up and wrap it around. Come on, stick where I want you to stick, and then wrap it all the way around. And again, press on your seam a little bit. And, well, see it almost started to rip right where I was. 
that groove goes. So I'll cut that off. I'll lay that down. Give it a gentle roll just to kind of smoosh it all together. If there's any hanging over, I tend to cut that off now. A little bit right here. Okay. So now begins the reducing process. And again, I've showed you how to reduce um, circles a million times, but I'll show you again, just in case you've never watched any of my other videos. So we're going to press with two fingers this way and press with two fingers this way and go around. And you're starting in the middle to begin with. You want to give it like a waist or some waist and hips. So give it an indent in the middle. And you don't want to push crazy hard at first. You want to, well, never. You, I mean, you just want to give it light pressure all the way around and keep rotating. Light pressure and keep rotating. Because if you put uneven pressure every time you push, um, one part will sink in more than the other. So try to keep each push pretty even and the same amount of pressure on each one. And when it gets a little bit longer and taller, it gets a little easier. So I'm still giving it a waist. I'm still just working in the middle. I'm actually using like this part of my thumb right here. Okay, you see how it has a waist or an indent here? And then we're going to start there and we're going to rotate and work our way up to the edge. And that will even it off. And yes, we're going to get some distortion. It's just always the way it is. Okay, and that one's now even with the waist, and we're going to start in the middle again and work our way up to the other end. And since I was just working with this translucent, the translucent's super warm, whereas I haven't messed with the white petals in a while, so they're going to move slower than the translucent. So we're going to get more translucent excess. I give it a quick roll just to even off all my fingerprints, and then again I'm going to start in the middle and give it another waist work up to the end, work up to the end, little roll. So I'm going to continue doing this until I get it down to the size I want. Usually I do three sizes, but with this one I'll probably just do like the medium and small sizes because again, this is going to be an accent cane, but I actually might do all three sizes because I could use this in a later project and you never know, I might want a bigger, just plain white flower, maybe to cover a seam or just some kind of accent. So I'm going to um, continue reducing this and then I will be back when that's done and we will see what we have. Like I said, I'm not quite sure what this is going to look like or how it's going to turn out, but I'm sure it'll be cute. So I'll be back in a minute. And don't worry about what's happening. We're worried about what's happening in the, in the middle. So I'll be back. Okay, so I have it reduced into one of my normally largest size. Um, so you ready to see this? I'm so excited. Let's see what happens. I'm trying to wiggle it a little bit so it doesn't distort too bad. So that's what we came up with. And again, this will be just like a nice little accent cane. It's very basic. Very simple. But that's what we got. I get it to focus a little better. I'm going to hold it still for a second, so hopefully that will be a shot for my picture so I don't have to upload a picture with it. But anyways, I'm going to take this half. Here's the other half. I got a little, they got a little distorted when I um, cut them. I'm going to take this other half, and I'm going to reduce it the same way I have been into a couple smaller ones. So I will do that, and then I'll show you all three of them at the end, and then we will be done with this accent cane tutorial. Okay, so I'm done reducing. So we have my large, I have a medium, the small, and a really small. And this is more the size I'm going to use, but I figured I might as well leave them. They're super sticky. I might as well leave them um, larger because I can always reduce them smaller. But if I reduce it too 
small and I can't use it. So that's what I ended up using. Now what am I doing for sizes? Those four there. So from our biggest to our smallest. I think they're really cute. Um, they're gonna be it's gonna be a super cute accent piece. You could, you know, do this in color as an accent piece. You could do this um, with a black wrapping around the white petals. However you prefer to do this is just a simple flower cane. Very basic, very simple, very easy to do. So I hope this tutorial was helpful for you guys. Hope, um, again, it gives you something to work with, a little inspiration, something easy and fun, not too, too challenging on this one here. Um, good for, like I said, little accent canes and different kinds of projects. And we will be using this in another project coming up soon when we also use our little... Um, what I'm calling my buttercup flower. So we'll be mixing these with a bunch of other ones that I will be making and showing you. So I hope you guys have a great day. I hope you have a good weekend. It is Saturday. And um, if this was helpful to you, please like, please share, make comments. Um, let me know if you have any questions. You know, help me out by sharing. I think I have 40 something subscribers now, um, which is helpful. So more people like and share, you know, share it with your Facebook pages, share it with, um, you know, just anything, YouTube, Instagram, whatever. Um, so anyways, have a great day. I will see you guys next time with our next tutorial. Bye for now.